I still don't understand why you don't just tell me what's going on. Listen, we understand you have a very busy schedule, Mr. Mayor, but we couldn't just tell you what we found. We've been studying it for almost a week now, and we still don't understand it. Is that someone I knew? No, weirder. What? One of my officers found this body washed up on the shore of Lake Fiberglass Tuesday morning. We believe he died of multiple gunshot wounds just a couple of hours before he was found. Is that... how does... We ran multiple DNA tests. This body matches your DNA sequence exactly, and also has the exact same fingerprints you do. Do... do you know who shot... it? No, sir. Actually, we were wondering if you knew anything about this. You were wondering if I... No, I don't know anything about this. Jesus, man, I'm the mayor of a small town. What kind of wacky voodoo shit do you think I get up to on my free time? Look, I have to go now. I'm almost late for a meeting. But for the love of God, somebody figure out what that thing is. I don't want that body buried until we figured out exactly who it is and who killed it. Don't worry, sir. We'll get every detective in town on this case. Shit. Good afternoon and welcome to Wickenburger. What can I get for you today? Oh uh, yeah, I'll take a Wickenburger with cheese, a large carne asada fries, and a cactus cooler slushy. Will that be all for you today, sir? Yeah, that sounds good. Sam? Is something wrong, Mr. Donner? The customer says he ordered a chicken burger, not a Wiccan burger. Are you even paying attention to which buttons you press? With all due respect, sir, I have gotten really good about getting the orders right. In fact, my last audit showed 93% accuracy. 93% accuracy? You think that's good enough? <sighs> Sam, look at your name tag. See what it says? Server. That's because you're here to serve the customers. You're here to make the experience of eating here about them. Even if they're rude. Even if they don't treat you like a fellow human being, you gotta do it. If it's about them, then why do you have a giant ice sculpture of yourself in the dining room? That's to remind you all who's boss. Well, if it's for us, then why is it out in the dining room and not here in the kitchen? Because it would melt if it was here next to the fryers. Look, the point is 93% accuracy isn't good enough. You have to give the customers what they want 100% of the time. Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure you're the one who took my order. Wait, what? Yeah, you were at this register, and she was all the way over there. Hey, that's right. I didn't take his order. Hi. Well, um, I mean, like, come on. Everybody makes mistakes, right? Go make that chicken sandwich now. I'm sorry, but my shift just ended. I said now! 
I've already worked 40 hours this week, so unless you want to pay me overtime, I gotta go home. I'll see you tomorrow night at closing shift. Are you tired of your dead-end job? Would you rather be solving mysteries? Well, then you should enroll at Drywall University's Detective Academy. At Drywall University, you'll learn all the skills needed to earn your four-year degree and become a licensed detective. Hi, I'm Sheriff Adam Hachita Sr., head of the Drywall Police Department's Detective Squad. If you'd like to join my team and solve mysteries, I'd recommend our town's very own Drywall University. Please enroll. Please. We need new detectives immediately. The ones we have now are completely incompetent. Seriously, those guys couldn't find their own dicks in a sausage factory. So then, I asked Mr. Donner where the OSHA safety manual is, and he said, Ocean safety manual? What the hell do you need that for? We're not on the coast. Hey, uh, Sam? Is this yours? Where'd you find that? You left it here on this table. I didn't know you were planning to go to college. That's because I don't know if I am. Wh why would you not? Come on, Ramona. We both know I'm not smart enough for college. What are you talking about? Yes, you are. Besides, you told me yourself that you always wanted to go to college. That was years ago. I barely graduated from high school. But you did graduate. Look, Sam, you're not dumb. And even if you were, which you're not, a lot of stupid people graduate from college every year. If they can do it, so can you. That's easy for you to say. You graduated top of our class. You were the smartest person in the whole school. Well, that's true. <sighs> Sam, remember when we were little and we used to talk about how we both wanted to become detectives together? Well, I may have lost the opportunity to go to college when I was forced to live on my own. But you still have it. Don't just let go of your dream if you don't have to. Life's too short to worry about what might happen if you fail. But... The application fee. Oh, for God's sake, it's only $50! That's a lot of money! You know what? Here, I haven't gotten you a birthday present yet, so here you go. Oh, Ramona, I can't accept this. Just take it. Take it and get out of this dump. If you don't get in, at least you'll know. And if you do, then I'm sure you'll be eligible for plenty of financial aid. Uh, but, but... Okay. Thank you, Ramona. You're a good friend. I think a part of me knew my application would be accepted, because as soon as I put it into the mailbox, I said, God, I hope I don't screw this up. I did some research on our first professor. Dr. Patchy Sitgreaves. It says here he studied at four of the top five detective schools in the country. Whoa, that guy was in college for 15 years. He must be a genius. Good morning, class. My name is Dr. Patchy Sitgreaves. Welcome to Detective Work 101, our school's beginner-level introductory detective work class. Before we begin today's lecture, I think it would be best for all of you to introduce yourselves. Uh, you first. Me? State your name and why you want to be a detective. Um, okay. My name is Samantha Scottsdale. And I want to be a detective because, well, it's what I've always wanted to do, ever since I was little. It's just always appealed to me. I guess it's just the, the slow burn, you know? The thrill of the chase. I don't know if that makes sense. I'll go next. Hello, everyone. My name is Bridget Bisbee. I said, hello, everyone. My name is Bridget Bisbee. Clap, damn you! That's better. 
Anyway, I want to become a detective so that I can fuck a serial killer. I... wait, what? That's right, Teach. You know, I've spent my whole life getting nothing but straight A's. I've always been at the top of my class, and I graduated valedictorian. But over the summer break, I started to wonder, what was it all for? What do I even want to be? Do I want to waste my intellect on something empty and meaningless like becoming a doctor? Hell no. I want to become a detective so that I can find a serial killer and let him fuck my brains out before I send him to prison. I... um... okay. I'm a good student, Dr. Sitgreaves. I'm attentive and I study hard. So please, feel free to call on me for as many answers as you'd like. Yeah, sure, whatever. Next! Hello! My name is Adam Hachita. I'm here because my dad's a sheriff and he wanted me to study here, I guess. Wait, your dad is Sheriff Hachita? Oh man, I'll make sure to call on you for a lot of answers. Hey, Samantha, right? I usually go by Sam. Hey, Sam. I guess you're new here, and I guess we're both in the same detective class, huh? It would appear that is the case, yes. You're new here, so you probably don't have a group of friends yet, do you? No, I suppose I don't. Tell you what, my best friend Adam and I are planning to meet up in my dorm room to eat lunch, or maybe play some video games, or study together. You want to join us? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I'd like that. Whoa, this floor has male and female dorm rooms? Yes, but only this floor, floor 7. Floors 1, 3, and 5 are women's only, and floors 2, 4, and 6 are men's only. Have you not moved in yet? No, not until this evening. I think I got the room next to yours, though. Oh, cool. Close the door. Whoa. Oh yeah, all the rooms here have security cameras because the Arizona College Board has a stick up its ass and doesn't want us to have sex. Luckily, I'm only attracted to serial killers. So I wouldn't be doing it here anyway. Yeah, but where do you change clothes? In the shower rooms. Now Sam, when I told you I wanted to hang out with you because you seemed cool and I wanted to be your friend, that was completely true. I do want to be your friend, but... There's another reason. Something very specific my friend Adam and I wanted to ask you. Okay. Um, how do I ask this? <laughs> so you joined the school because you wanted to be a detective, right? Yeah. Well, we're not licensed yet, but my friend Adam and I like to solve cases as underground detectives. Okay. Right now, we're working on a case involving, well, this guy. My boss? Yes. We know you work at the Wickenburger because we've seen you there. Six months ago, your boss's wife left him for someone else. Shortly afterwards, the guy she left him for disappeared. We believe your boss murdered him, but we have no proof. So, uh, we spy on him for us? Oh no, come on, Bridget. You can't ask her that already. We just met her and you're asking too much. It's okay if you say no. I mean, we can find another way to spy on him and we'll still want to be your friend and everything. We just... I'll do it. Wait, really? Of course. My boss is a jackass, and if he actually killed someone, it would only be right for me to get to the bottom of it. Thanks, Sam! Oh, and if you do find proof that he's murdered someone, could you call me instead of calling the police? I'm not exactly doing this whole detective thing for charity. I mean, Adam is, but I'm here to get my beak wet if you know what I'm saying. Wait, you want to... Yep. With my boss? Only if he's murdered someone. I'll see what I can do.
Hey, Sam. I was in the back room taking some inventory, and I saw we were missing seven grains of salt. Do you know what happened to them? Uh, I think I saw someone throw them out last night at closing. That might have been seven grains of sugar, though. They were pretty far away. They're coming out of your next paycheck. Mr. Donner, can I go home? It's almost 3 a.m. and there's a storm outside. I don't think anyone's coming to get a burger. Plus, I'm pretty sure that open now sign you bought is defective. Two dings! You know what that means. A delivery order. Ugh. Delivery? Alright, but then can I go home? Wait a second. That's my ex-wife's order! Hey! Uh, actually, uh, I I'm pretty sure all those burgers just expired at midnight, so uh, you know what? I'll make this one, and you can just sit in the break room until I'm ready for you to deliver it. Okay. Let's see. Tax fraud. Conspiracy to commit tax fraud. Conspiracy to eventually get around to fixing the lock of my filing cabinet so that nobody ever finds out about my tax fraud. Wait, what's this? But our freezer doesn't have a combination lock. Hey, Sam! Hey, Sam! Are you in there? Here I am, sir. Here's the order. I gotta put the statue in the freezer, and then I'm locking up for the night. Now, when you... Wait, where were you? Oh, I was just... in the woman's restroom. Uh-huh. Now remember, make sure that burger gets to my ex-wife, Sierra Trucking. Of course. Good. See you tomorrow. Oh. My. God. <coughs> Hello? 911? Good morning, Drywall. I'm Von Roswell. Just a few moments ago, Mr. Donner, owner of the local Wickenburger, was arrested for murdering his ex-wife's boyfriend, chopping him up and feeding him to her bit by bit as fast food patties. This crime was actually uncovered by one of the Wickenburger's star employees, Samantha Scottsdale. Also, oh, what's this? I'm being told that Mr. Donner has just arrived at the county jail and our channel's very own interning reporter, Sierra Truckee, is live at the scene. How are things out there, Sierra? Well, Vaughn, it looks like they're about to bring my ex-husband out of the police car right now. So, Duncan, I mean, uh, <clears throat> my ex-husband, I mean, uh, Mr. Donner, what do you have to say for yourself? I'll kill you, Sam Scottsdale! You think you're safe with me locked up? But one night, 
when you least expect it. I'll break into your room and I'll gut you like a fish. No prison can hold this award-winning burger franchisee. <laughs> hey, by the way, can I have that burger I ordered last night? Yeah, sure. It's in the back of the police car. Ooh, it's still warm. Um, Sierra, I wouldn't eat that if I were you. Wait, have you not even been paying attention to this story? Do you not even know why your ex-husband is being arrested? I'm sorry, what? Well, we got him. He really sounded like he wants to kill me. Yeah, and so do I. I thought I told you to call me and not the police. It was the heat of the moment, Bridget. I just found a frozen dead body for the first time in my life, and my normal human instincts kicked in. Yeah, well, I'm only cutting you some slack because it was your first time. If you're still freaking out the tenth time you see a frozen dead body, something's wrong with you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go... test whether or not these AA batteries work. Don't listen to her, Sam. You did the right thing. Good evening, officers and detectives. Before I begin this meeting, I need to remind all of you that what I'm about to say is extremely classified information. It may be confusing and terrifying, but none of it can leave this room. Hey, yeah, uh, I sort of zoned out. Did you say we can leave this room? Uh, I do not have a good feeling about this. The mayor's dead? Not exactly. Well, we don't know, actually. This body was found two weeks ago, but it matches the mayor's DNA and fingerprints exactly. We showed the mayor this body last week, and he was just as shocked and confused as us. Then just yesterday, the mayor disappeared after giving a speech at some ceremony at the park. So is the mayor who disappeared the real mayor, or is that the real mayor? We don't know who the real mayor is. This one, that one, both, neither. All we know is one thing. There's a lot of weird shit going on in this town. <laughs>